Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing our .NET Web API telemetry. We're going to be seeing how we can actually visualize those telemetries, check the logs, and have a fully fledged dashboard so we can actually track every single request coming into our Web API. We're going to be seeing a dashboard similar to this one, where we can see every single request coming in. We're able to see traces of our, of our requests. We can see basically every single request that we do, the response time. We'll be able to see the values that we have sent as well as different information that helps us analyze our request. We're going to be going through step by step of how we can actually create something similar to this. And we're going to be seeing how we can add these types of functionality to almost any type of .NET applications. If you'd like to learn more about .NET, AWS or Azure, please make sure you like and subscribe. Now let's get started. What I can have here is I have the web API that we always utilize which basically consists of two controllers, which is gonna be the driver's controllers as well as an achievement controllers. We have a couple of class libraries that we are utilizing in order for us to be able to interact with our database and basically have our entity framework code first approach. So if I run my web API right now, and I go to my web browser, we can see here that I have my web API up and running within my Swagger interface. And basically I can execute the normal CRUD operation. So I can get, for example, my users or actually my drivers. We can see I have a one single driver here. I can add a new driver. So I'm just gonna, gonna add myself. And now if I do an execute, we'll be able to see now I have two drivers available. Perfect. So if I go back to my code, now what I wanna do is I wanna actually add functionality to this web API in order for me to have that dashboard utilizing open telemetry in order for me to track every single thing that's happening within my web API. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to install some packages. So I'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to navigate to my web API. And what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to install a couple of packages. So we're going to put not add package open telemetry dot exporter console. That's going to be the first one. I'm going to install a different package, which is going to be open telemetry. I'm going to clear this up. I'm going to install a different package, which is going to be open telemetry extensions dot hosting. Then I'm going to install a different package as well. Open telemetry dot instrumentation dot ASP not code. Again, another package. I know it sounds other kind of packages, but we really need them. I'm going to install the instrumentation for HTTP requests, which allow me to actually monitor every single HTTP request coming in. Then I'm going to be installing another exporter in order for me to export everything regarding open telemetry. And once I have that has been installed, I'm going to add an instrumentation for for entity framework core which is still in beta version so i'm going to put here instrumentation dot entity framework core and i'm going to specify the version because as we said it is still in beta version so this version will be 10.0.0 dash beta 12 and now that has been installed successfully i'm going to clear this up to dot not build make sure everything is installing and everything is still running perfect so why did we why are we installing all of these packages and why do we need them so we're going to be utilizing open telemetry and open telemetry is a high quality ubiquitous portable telemetry to enable effective observability so what does this mean it means that it's an open source standard that we can utilize within our .NET Web API in order for us to generate logs and telemetry that third-party solution or third-party dashboard will be able to pick up and will be able to actually generate certain UI interfaces that we can actually interact with in order for us to monitor our application. And open telemetry supports a lot of different languages. It is part of Cloud Native Foundation, which means that it is has a lot of maintainability. It has a lot of different sources around it, and it has has a lot of long life if you'd like to think about it that way and it's very easy to implement and everything that we're going to be utilizing is going to be open source and basically we don't really have to pay anything for it and the implementation is quite straightforward and it's gonna it is the current trend that basically all applications are using and it is a trend that we can actually utilize within our .NET Web APIs, microservices, whatever it is. So now that we have understood what is open telemetry, let us go back to our code and see how we can actually start achieving this. So I'm going to close this one here and inside my program.cs, I'm going to start adding some logic here. So after my unit of work, I'm going to add builder dot services dot add open telemetry. Next, I'm going to configure my open telemetry by the configure resources and I'm going to put here resources and I'm going to give it some configuration. I'm going to be adding my service and I'm going to call this Formula One API. Next, I want to specify the metrics that I want to actually collect and I'm going to start configuring all of the metrics that I want. Let's close this one here. So the metrics are going to be the following. So I'm going to add my ASP.NET Core instrumentation, which I added. As well, I'm going to be adding my HTTP instrumentation. Perfect. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tracing as well. I'm going to provide different configuration for the tracing that I'm going to be using. So the first one is going to be also ASP.NET instrumentation. The next is going to be HTTP. And lastly, we're going to utilize our entity framework. Okay, perfect. So now that I have my instrumentation as well as my metrics and tracing available, the next item that I want to add here is going to be builder logging and open telemetry. And within this, what I want to do is I want to specify that right now my open telemetry is going to go to the console so I can see them there. So I'm going to have, what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have my options and inside my options, I'm going to specify the console. So I'm going to have here add my add console exporter as well. I'm going to set a resource builder to source builder that create default service. And I'm going to give this service a name formula one API. Perfect. So basically what I'm doing here is the first step is I want to enable my application to actually start generating this open telemetry logs. And that's what I'm doing here. All I have done is basically just configured my application startup to take those packages to embed the open telemetry requirement that I have, which is going to be my metrics, my tracing. And then I told it that it needs to actually generate into the console. The next step is I'm going to go to my driver's controller and I'm going to create a new logger here. So I'm going to put private read only I logger for driver's controller and I'm going to call it logger. Then I'm going to initialize this through the constructor. And within this, I'm going to start utilizing it inside my controller. So for example, here, I'm going to update this and I'm going to say, for example, logger dot log warning. I can say driver not found. I can say also here for the ID. And then for example, here I can say driver found. So dot logger dot log information. And I'm going to say driver found and I'm going to pass the result of the found driver again for adding a driver as well. I can say, for example, if it goes wrong, I can return like a, a log saying that there were the model is invalid so i can again here say underscore logger dot log warning i can say invalid driver model and i'm gonna pass the driver and i can say here also for example there is error so i can say here for example again put model state let's make it this as here put the dollar sign and then i can say here model state dot count which is gonna be the errors i'm gonna remove the driver from here because basically I can just return it like this. Perfect. And then after everything has been updated, I can just return another logger. I say that log information, I can say driver has been added successfully. Perfect. And let's do one more here. For example, for get all drivers, I can say underscore logger dot log information. I can say driver found actually drivers found. I'm returning the drivers actually. Yeah, let's return the drivers and I can create another one. I can say drivers found just return account. And here we can say driver.count and make this drivers. Perfect. I'm just going to make this count. Perfect. And this needs to be an us. So here we have basically a very basic controller, which has some logging implemented on top of the open telemetry configuration that we have added inside our program.cs. So now if I come to my debugger, we can see now it's running. I'm going to keep it on the console here and we can see here directly. We have some more information being popping up rather than the default logs our application provides. So now we can see our application is running. We can see here that my service name is now Formula One API because I gave it that name. We have an instance ID for my service and this allows us to basically monitor our API. Once it scales, for example, every single one of these instances will have a different ID. So let's say my application scales to three different servers based on my telemetry i can know which service is which server is actually receiving this request and i can uh, debug from there we can see here that the open sdk uh, that i'm using which is open telemetry and i'm utilizing version 1.9 and then if i go down a bit more we can see here that i can even trace my category name so these for example the hosting services that I have installed as well if i go a bit more we can see here for example this is my lifetime we can see the environment variable which already shows from before but if i scroll a bit down we can see here also i have the same information so now i'm gonna go back to my swagger inside my web browser and i'm gonna execute my get driver apis a couple of times and i'm gonna go back to my telemetry here and i'm gonna see what's what's happening so now if I go a bit up, let's go all the way up. Okay. So here we can see that I have a new request coming in. And this is basically, this is my SQL statement that has been executed through entity framework. We can see the timestamp that has been executed, the trace ID, the span ID. I can see even the trace flag. And then if I go a bit down, 
we can see here that another request, which is because I executed a few times, has already been added. Every single one of these requests have their own unique timestamp within Trace ID, so I'm able to see them. And we can see here that I have a lot of different information for every single one of these requests. Even the logs that I have added, so for example, driver found number two, which is going to be the same log that I have added here. And basically here we have also added the another info regarding the drivers found. So you also have that in place here. As you can see here, it is a collection. We did not serialize it. We can do that as well in order for us to serialize this information. But for now, I did not do that. We can see here if, for example, I try to update. So let's see, if, let's see a warning. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take this information here. And I think we have done one, I think, on the create user. Let's double check on add a driver. So I'm going to try to add a driver right now. I'm going to put here Muhammad one and I'm going to put a number as a CQ. I'm going to execute so this will fail we can see that it had failed because the driver field is required so now if i go back to my logger here we can see here the logs has been updated and now if i go back and change this to an actual new driver so i'm just going to put driver id equal to two click on execute now we have a 201 here if i get my drivers we can see i got three drivers now if i go back to my console and I scroll a bit down we can see here that my answer has been added and this is all thanks to the instrumentation for entity framework core we can see the log request that has came into planes and if you scroll a bit down we can see here that our, uh, the logs that we have added is actually showing as well if we go all the way down we can see now that we have the get request is also actually running and we can see the drivers counts here which is the list here for example that we have provided and the last one which is RAM with found equal three is now appearing so we can see that within the console we are able to see a lot of different information which can be helpful but it's really hard to manage the console so there is way matter way to actually interpret and get all of this information is through a dashboard and the dashboard that we're going to be utilizing is a microsoft dashboard which has been provided for us for free with dot not aspire so dot not aspire if you don't know it's a way that we can actually create a lot of different microservices and one of the nice features that uh, dot not aspire has provided us is an open source dashboard that we can actually use plug and play we don't have to do anything we can just download the, uh, the container image from docker hub and we can actually use it in our applications so in order to find this i'm gonna go to my web browser here and this is basically the docker hub page for aspire where i can actually see what is the url that i can use as well it gives me some information about the endpoint that i need to hook up my information my application to in order for it to work so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to be creating a new docker compose file which actually allow me to run this dashboard and from there what I'm going to be utilizing is I'm going to hook my web APIs to listen to send information to this dashboard in order for me to visualize it. So let's see how we can do this right now. So inside Rider, I'm going to stop my application. I'm going to go to the console. I'm going to go to the root directory and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it docker compose.yaml and now if i go a bit down we can see here i have my docker compose file and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create the services that i want in order for me to have the docker compose available for me so the first thing i want to do is i want to add my services and all i'm going to do here is a formula dashboard and this is going to be for my formula one api we can see here now i'm actually referring to the image and this image is going to be the same image that i just showed you here inside my web browser which is this one here it is exactly the same and here i'm referring to version 8.2 and here i'm choosing latest we can put 8.2 then i'm giving it a container name in this case i'm calling it dashboard then i'm specifying two ports the first port that you see here is if we go back to the documentation and let me zoom in a bit here the first port which is going to be 18888 this is going to be the graphical user interface where I can go through my web browser and actually see all of the different telemetries and different dashboard that I can see there. The other one, which is 1889, which is basically the GRCP code, which is basically all of the telemetries that my web API is generating. I'm sending them to that port. So the dashboard will be listening to that port in order for it to run. And this is going to be the main point here. We need to make sure that the information that I'm sending from my web API needs to match the information or the port data that the dashboard is going to be listening to. And it's going to be the key in data here. So that's going to be the main two ports, the 18, 
8889 and 18888. So now that I have, I know these exact ports. So inside my code here, I make sure that these ports are available for me to use. And I connected them through my, inside my Docker Compose. And then basically I specified a network in order for me to actually utilize. I don't really need to do this because it's a single instance, but I can just add networks here and I can just make open available. Perfect. So now that I have this, all I'm going to do is inside my terminal, I'm going to clear this up and I'm going to put docker dash compose up. So now as we can see here, my docker has already been, because uh, I downloaded it before, for you it might take a bit of time to download, it's already up and running. We can see here that I have my interface that I can log into, which is going to be the port 18888, and it's giving me a security token for me to use. So I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to go to my web browser. I'm just going to close this one and open a new one. Localhost 18. 888 and we can see here it's up and running so now what i want to do is i'm gonna wire up my api in order for it to send all of this information to this port and it's going to be very easy to do so i'm going to go back to my program.cs and inside my program.cs there's going to be three places where i need to tell it where is it going to be sending this information the metrics the tracing as well as the console exporter here for the sorry for the logging here so let's see how we can add them so inside my metrics, I'm going to put add OTLP exporter, which is stand for open telemetry exporter. I'm going to specify its options. And basically I'm going to tell it that it needs to connect to the URL, which is going to be the GRCP code. And I'm going to tell it the endpoint for it. It's going to be localhost on port 18889. So that's going to be the first one. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put the same one for the tracing. And here I'm going to make sure it's T, not the M1. And basically it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to send it to this uh, URL, which is going to be the dashboard. And lastly, inside my logging, I'm going to put OPT. And this is where I'm going to be sending it. Here we have two OPT. I'm just going to change this to X and X. And that's why just a bit of a cleaning up of my code. So now that I have done this here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run my application again. Now we can see it's running. Again, everything is showing inside my console, which is good. I'm going to go back to my web browser. I'm going to refresh my swagger here. And I'm going to, first of all, get the drivers. I'm just going to try it out. Execute. We got the three drivers that we have before. Few times. And I'm going to also add a new driver. So I'm going to add another driver. I'm going to say, let's say, Valtteri, say, Bottas, 77, execute. We can see here that has executed successfully. So now if everything is working successfully, if I go to the logs, we can see everything has already started to pop up. We can see here now the logs that the environment is listening to is actually showing up here. Drivers found is actually showing up here. The information, everything is showing up here. So if I click on this, for example, we can see the driver found, the list of drivers that currently exist. We need to serialize it in order for this to show. I did not do this right now, but we can add this later. We can see here all of the different information that we have seen inside the console. As well, if I go to traces, inside the traces here, you can see my get request, you can see the post. So for example, for the post, if I click on it, we can see here the amount of time it took, which is almost like 200 milliseconds. If I click on that, we can see the information, we can see the system data, which is SQL light, uh, the name of my database, the open telemetry, which is we have utilized, which is the beta one for entity framework core. If I scroll a bit down, again, more information around this. And I can even click on view here and I can actually specify the different spans. So this one, for example, for my database, this is for my call. I can click on view logs. I can see the exact logs for this one here. I can click on it again, see all of the different information, see the answered statement that has occurred into the database, as well as the trace ID and the span ID in order for me to actually have those correlations for those different requests. And under matrix, if I choose Formula 1 API, I can see the different matrix for my applications, the duration of all the requests. So we can see here the different requests that I'm doing, like the get and the post, the different connections that I currently have uh, running. We can see also different types of metrics that I can actually utilize in order for me to monitor my application and check the status of my application and the health of my application. So there's a lot of so there's a lot of different ways that I can actually customize my metrics. I can customize my logging. This is, has been a very quick introduction on this introduction about open telemetry the dashboard that we're going to be utilizing as well as how we can hook it up together if you're interested in, in, in learning more about this please let me know in the comments down below i'll make sure to create a much more in-depth tutorial on how we can actually leverage this into a real case scenario i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions 
or you have any suggestions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee or becoming a member of this channel thank you very much for watching and have a great day